Welcome back to Digesting Dark, where we are tackling the Netflix series Dark one episode at a time. For this episode, we rewatched episode three, past and present of Dark season one. Of course, this podcast, we go into each episode of Dark one by one, watching them and discussing them from the full perspective of seeing all of season one and two. Then once season three drops in June of 2020, June 27th, 2020, we will start watching season three all fresh and discussing each of those episodes one at a time as well. So this is just our chance to catch up on the first two seasons of Dark, really do some deep dive analysis into them and see what we find knowing where the series is going out of the first two seasons. My name is Zach Brooks and I am joined today by the Oh, what should we say? We usually say I usually say Mickle to my Magnus, but uh, the Mads to my Ulrich, Aaron Brooks. Hey, how's it going? Glad to be here in the present or when you guys are watching us in the past, since this will have already Oh, that's had. true. This is, yeah. We didn't record this 30 years ago, though. Yeah, so. that's how, yeah. I guess that is how recordings work, though. But yeah, they are, glad they, to are be time, here. they are time machines. Yeah, glad to be here. Um, this is my favorite episode so far. Um, oh yeah, this is the one. This is the one that on um, the first watch got me hooked. I'm assuming this is the one that gets most. If you did like a poll of people yeah. who watch Dark, like each episode, it'd be kind of cool if Netflix did this. Each episode, you say how into the show you are, like not what you rated, it, but just how into the show you are. I would imagine this is definitely the highest marks. Uh, probably, you know, at least the first half of the season. So yeah, uh, yeah, I would say maybe the entire season. If I'm being honest, it's just it's the first time you're introduced to the '80s and. Seeing the 80s from the German perspective is so fascinating because it's almost the same as like... I was going to say, it doesn't seem that different. <laughs> it's almost the same, but it's like just slightly... I don't know. It's just like slightly different, but it is amazing how similar it is. And if I just... Yeah. I think it's... it's I would say it is more influenced by Chernobyl than we were in America, at least. I mean, you weren't alive at this yeah. year, but I was, I was uh, a small little baby. And... Uh, I don't remember anything Chernobyl related going on in America, for, but it seems like Chernobyl has a big impact, especially on Winden, which is also a nuclear power um, city. Yeah, true. So, but yes, we are, you and I are side by side recording this. And uh, just like the side by side characters at the end of the episode. Oh, man. Now I have some come up with some theories about myself. Right, <laughs> you're you're looking at a uh, past version. Although we don't see we don't see every character side by side at the end of this episode. We don't see future Claudia because that's going to be a reveal later on. Yeah. Um, we also don't see Michael as Michael because uh, which apparently uh, apparently that is a uh, that was not revealed in this episode. For some reason, I thought we did get that reveal in this, but you know we're starting to hint around it. Obviously, mm -hmm. he meets Ines, who's going to be his adopted mother, but um. All right, so like we like to do, we will go through each of these as the different families. It's, it provides a good uh, a good format for us to break down what happens as best we can, keeping it within the families. But they do start interacting, so it makes it a little bit harder. Um, so I guess we'll start with the Nielsens, because this is really big Nielsen episode between uh, Mikkel and Ulrich and, and their whole Nielsen family. At some point, I guess we'll have to start putting Mikkel into the Conwald yeah. uh, timeline, or the Conwald uh, bloodline, I guess is what I was looking for. So uh, Mikkel, he has exited the cave. He's walking around much like, I brought him up a lot, much like Marty McFly. He's in the past. And he goes to his, he goes to his house. We actually open with a, uh, a commercial for the candy bar that Mads liked, that Janice's Mads liked. Um, I don't remember. Was it Rebellion Bar? Is that the name of the of the candy bar that we see? Do you remember? It's called Raider. It's a Raider candy bar. Um, I haven't looked up if this is a real one or real candy bar or not, but I do think it really. It I think it's strange how it opens on. First of all, I think it's an overshot of the woods, like most of the episodes. But then the first <laughs> shot we see is that television in that room, mm -hmm. it's like a candy bar commercial. Like, well, the television in the room is the – it's uh, Jana's living room that we see the television, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that one is, yeah. Yep, you're I mean, right. we, do see the, we do see the television of the room with yeah. Eric as yeah. well. But this one we see, we see Jana because she's laying on the couch, yeah. clearly like still upset about uh, Mad's disappearance, which we said in the last episode that it must be the, you know, the, the 33 year anniversary of Mad's disappearing. We're actually wrong about that because they say uh, Mad's has been missing for four weeks now. Oh, 
So um, I think it's the 33 year anniversary of when they send, when um, Helge and Noah send Mads when Mads time travels because Mads ends up outside the caves. But I don't think that, um, I think they must have had Mads like doing tests on him under captivity for four weeks before they actually sent him to the past or to the future. Gotcha. So we'll find out more of that, I think, later on in the season when we get a little bit more about Mads yeah. and where they're sending him. So oh. Jana sees Mikkel walk in to what he thinks is his house. And then... Jana- Which I guess the, the houses don't change among families. They just keep the... They just pass it on from parents to kids, which again, another weird, another weird thing with this town. Not only do they not change, but it doesn't seem like they like the appearances of them really change either. Yeah, like, barely. I think my house back home looks a little different thirty years ago than it did today, but I guess I mean I guess not. And then Jana keeps asking, uh, "When is he coming back?" Yes. I think uh, it's just a weird question to ask. Not where he is. Or, and maybe it's not. Maybe I'm looking too far into that. Maybe yeah, if I, I didn't, that didn't strike me as weird. I mean, maybe. Um, but, you know, one thing that is interesting is, I, didn't, I never even thought about it, but, like, how is, how is Mikkel just able to enter the house so easily? They do say later on in the episode that they don't lock the front door because when Mads disappeared, he didn't have his key with him. So they want to leave the door unlocked just as, like, a, a, a sign of hope. Um, that that someday Mads will come back and will be you know they, there won't be any hurdle to him getting back to the house because they'll have the door unlocked, um, and that also is what allows Egon to get into the house later when he mm-hmm. confronts Magnus or when he confronts uh, Ulrich. I mean, mm-hmm. so um, yeah, she asks him when he's coming back. Uh, Jana also asks Mikkel, "Who are you?" Which I thought is a very pointed question. Yep. So of course we know that he is Michael. He will be uh, Jonas's father, but. The audience watching for the first time is like, yeah, who are you? You're just a kid in a skeleton outfit. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you were right. He did disappear in a red jacket. Yeah. So. And he's and I just I do think that um, him disappearing in the skeleton hoodie. I I just do think that's symbolic. That like maybe once he traveled back through time, he was already dead. Like mm. it, once like once you do that, it almost eliminates yourself from the world maybe in a way i don't know well because traveling back in time sets him on the path to be michael to end up killing himself uh right. 30 years in the future although if he didn't travel back in time then jonas would be wearing those skeletons because jonas would not be alive so so really jonas isn't supposed to exist because he's a child of michael and right and you can actually say that about a, a lot of characters on this show that's the problem with a paradox um and, you know, I, I was first introduced to paradoxes with Back to the Future, Back to the Future Part 2 specifically, where, um, you know, or, well, I guess Back to the Future 1, where if, if Marty didn't go back, you know, Marty goes back, impacts his parents meeting each other and having him, but how could Marty go back and stop his parents from having him if Mar- they never have Marty? It, it ends up becoming that big cycle. And, you know, what Dark does differently than a lot of other time travel properties, they just lean into the fact, like, yes, there are a lot of paradoxes. and that's just the way it is. It may be part of how this all gets a little bit wrapped up is maybe if it, you remove one person from the world, the entire world is almost removed because it wasn't supposed to. Ex- it's, it's just. Yes. Uh, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, that's the, when Adam convinces Jonas to go back and stop my, I think he, I can't remember if he convinces him to go back and stop Michael from killing himself or go back and convince Michael to kill himself. But mm-hmm. then in the second season, we do see that episode where Jonas goes back to the day before Michael kills himself and he spends time with his father. Um, and I just can't remember exactly how that played out. So that will be interesting to watch when we get there. Yeah. So, um, all right. So after that first scene, then uh, Mikkel goes to the school. I did notice that the school is much less yellow this time um, than, than it was in the, in the 2019 timeline. It's very bright yellow, the, well, the accents on the school. Ra- radioactive environment. Oh, that like could be why. It's a huge sign of radioactivity with this show. Well, yellow yeah. is a sign of radioactivity? Yeah, bright yeah. yellow. Yeah. Like barrels, all the signs on the doors that are like warning of radioactivity always have yellow and black. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonas is a huge reason for why everything kind of happens. And so that's like, why he wears the yellow? Yeah, he's the bringer of the, of the centrifuge of the radi- radiation. I, I'm not a nuclear physicist expert by any means but right 
I do think, um, because I watched this first season, and then I watched Chernobyl after this, um, which if you've never watched Chernobyl, this is probably not the time to watch Chernobyl. This is probably the the worst time in the world to watch Chernobyl, unless uh, you like watching things that are terrifying. But um, I learned a lot more about nuclear energy and nuclear power plants and what happened at Chernobyl and the failures at Chernobyl from watching that HBO series. And I watched that between seasons one and two of this show. Yeah, so I think, yep, so did I. So, um, yeah, so Mikkel is at school. You know, we are getting flashes to my favorite movie, basically, because it's Mikkel going to school and interacting with his parents. Um, And when he walks in, there are pictures of Mads on the door, much like there are pictures of Eric on the door, much like there will be pictures of Mikkel on the door uh, Mm -hmm. all around the city. So, yep. um, And he confronts his mom. He does not realize it's his mom. Mikkel still at this point doesn't I, I guess if i was in his position i wouldn't really know what to think but he did see a newspaper that said 1986 and his father he saw a young version of his father and his mother but i don't i don't know what you would think in that situation I yeah think i think that, i would probably just think i'm dreaming i think that's yeah. the only way i would be able to rationalize this i mean it, what is Mick, what is Mikkel like 11 yeah i, th- I, I want to say 12 but um i'm not sure what I would maybe still believe I could time travel. So maybe I would maybe buy onto it quicker. I don't know. Though I think I think I would immediately run to any parent I could find and tell them. No. I don't think I could. <laughs> well, and that's what fair. he's trying to do. So he's trying to find his mom. He goes to the school and he asks where the principal is. And oh, right. and Katerina, his his mom in the future, tells him um they bring up uh, a different principal, and I don't think I have the name written down of the, the guy. Other it's it's a male principal, and then she says he's not a fag. So like yes, or, okay. That's bag. Like, yeah. So like it makes it clear that it's not his mom was the principal at the time. Right. You know? Um. And we also get um. We have we also have Hannah there, and Han- this is the first time uh, young Hannah and Nick will meet. Of course, they will end up together and be the parents of Jonas. Um. Hannah mentions her own father just mm-hmm. briefly, and I know we'll meet her father, but I don't think her father really has played much of a role in the show, other than just like driving her around. In the yeah, there's kind of an interesting point when they see Jonas later on, and he's with Hannah when that happens, mm. as they drive by the bus stop. That bus stop, that is a very significant bus stop. Yeah, we uh, see that bus stop a lot in the show. Yellow bus stop, and mm. lots of different people, um, lots of Nielsens who like to congregate with their um, with their affair there. So, um, oh. do you have more to say about Mikkel and the school? No, I think, um, I mean, I think, yeah, because then, then he goes to see Egon. Okay. Did you want, okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, did you want to bring on something before that or? No, no, go ahead. We can finish up Mikkel. I have some thoughts on Trante, so. Okay, yeah. Um, let's, yeah, let's, when, when do we see Trante? Um. Uh, It's when he's trying to interview Claudia about taking over the power plant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we get that a little bit later. Um, so before then we get. We get Egon and Mikkel. So Mikkel goes to the police station because now he's looking for his father at his father's place of work, which is the police station. Um, Egon thinks this is all a big joke that Ulrich sent Mikkel to antagonize Egon because Mads has disappeared. Um, of course, Egon, um, I don't think it's said in this episode, but Egon is Claudia's uh, father. I guess they do interact. Do they interact in this episode? I'm trying to remember. No, but he, I mean, he, inter- he introduces himself as Tiedemann on the phone. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, and so we, we don't know this character from the present timeline, obviously, because he dies in the 80s um, in season two. But uh, Egon is a big character. We'll see, we'll see a lot with Egon and Ulrich, both uh, young Ulrich and adult Ulrich interacting. Um, and we also get young Egon um, when we do end up going to the 50s. And he ends up with Hannah. So it's like this weird figure eight where he hates Ulrich, um, but all, the woman that Ulrich is having an affair with is the pers- is the woman that he's going to end up being with in the 50s. And I'm guessing that uh, they're going to have some sort of offspring that's going to end up being important. Yeah, and um, I just, one thing that caught my eye on Egon's desk was there was a Rubik's Cube just like right in the middle of his desk. Mm. And, like, I don't, he just doesn't seem like that kind of guy. I think, like, maybe that's supposed to hint towards maybe his role in this whole thing of 
sorting the pieces out and putting things back where they're supposed to be. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it is like a big puzzle. And a lot of times you're, you're turning and twisting a million times before you get to your answer on a Rubik's cube. So if you look at the timeline of this show as a Rubik's cube, that you're, you're like constantly trying to unscramble and get in the correct order. And the black thing that they show in season two kind of looks like a Rubik's cube, like being worked on, like the, the way it turns. Yeah. It's shifted. Like it's in mid shift. And it's like, really, if you think about it, like, if Jonas doesn't belong in like this world, for example, he's like the yellow piece in the Rubik's cube in the middle of the white wall or something. Mm. And think about how many moves and turns and twists you have to make in order to get that yellow piece where it belongs. If it's in the middle of a surrounded by a bunch of yeah, we, we'll have to look and see if there are other people who really don't belong in this world. I mean, I think Jonas. That's a really good point that Jonas like would not exist if Mickle never went back. Um, but I also think you could probably say that about Charlotte, given that her daughter is also her mother. Um, yeah. And so it might just be that ev- we, it turns out that everybody in this show shouldn't exist because everybody is the product of this weird time travel incest. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I just I did notice that with um, on with his desk. Yeah, with he also desk. had a he also has a Zippo lighter which Mickle takes. Um, yeah. And I have a I have a thought on on the lighters as well as we as we get to as we get to that point towards the end of the episode. Um, I used to have a Rubik's cube on my desk. It was a Tigers Rubik's cube, a Detroit Tigers Rubik's cube, and I never made any progress on it. <laughs> it it just sat there. I would like play with it when I was on phone calls sometimes, and it. Wouldn't I mean, what well, we've seen with Tiedemann through the first couple of seasons, maybe that's kind of his tragic story. Is he doesn't make any progress, and when that's all he wants to do is make progress, and he thinks he has an idea about Ulrich, and it's like. And it's just once you have an idea, like it, you're he almost is like looking for things to confirm that idea. And it's just like, yeah. And I'm, I, I'm trying to think through because so we know that he dies, the adult version, you know, the older version of him dies in the 80s. And so maybe he does something in the 50s, although he would remember it if he did something in the 50s, you would think, unless maybe he unwittingly uh, assists. So, you know, maybe that's with his relationship with Hannah, where he unwitting, unwittingly assists with, um, you know, with other, uh, with, with other time travelers and making things either happen or not happen and, and doesn't yeah. realize, but I don't think, I don't think he's like an all knowing time master the way we see Claudia or Noah in this show or Adam. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. All right. Um, so then Egon takes Mikkel to the hospital and this is where he meets Ennis, who's going to be his adopted mother once he ends up staying in the eighties. Um, and he tells her he's from the future and uh she I'm, i think she believes him she sees but she sees he's reading a, a common book that says future man so yeah, i think she i think that's telling us at first that she thinks he's getting the idea from the comic and yeah that's why kind of like doesn't respond to it oh could be yeah she's like oh he's just a boy reading a comic mm-hmm. um the first thing that they mention about Enos when they show her is she has no family. Yes, so they, they do say she has no family, and um, and so you know th- they're cluing us in that you know she's gonna she's gonna adopt him as a family, and it it, it works. I think it, it probably works out also, very well for her. Yeah, also cluing us in that she has motives to why she wouldn't, you know, why she wouldn't want to see the truth, why mm-hmm. she wouldn't want to, why she, you know, yeah. Just yeah, that, yeah. So I guess she probably doesn't doesn't ever have it confirmed that Mickle is Michael until she reads that letter. Um, yeah, but it may have been something she kind of always knew, right? Because he does say it, and it's 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 one of those things where you hear somebody say something, and it's always in the back of your mind, even if it's not. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's what what we're seeing is that the the future thing she has plausible deniability. She's like, oh, he's reading a comic book called Future Man. That must be it. But always in the back of her head, she's like, oh. What is that? Like, this kid just appeared out of nowhere. So. Um, and staying with Mikkel, so the last thing we see Mikkel do, he escapes out of the um, out of the hospital, and now he's running back to the cave. Instead of being in skeleton, in a skeleton costume, he's in, like, a hospital garb. Um, he runs into the cave. He's led by his lighter, or by Egon's lighter. And um, at the same time as Mikkel going into the cave, we see Ulrich going into the cave in the present. Um, and they are they can start to hear each other they're as close as they're well i guess they're going to be closer but they're as close as they've been since mickle disappeared um at the same time i mean this is taking place on that same day at the same time just 33 years apart so, yeah 
And uh, yeah, Mikkel, when he jumps out of the hospital window, that's a shot straight out of one flew over the cuckoo's nest when oh, the yeah. chief is jumping out again. Yep. Um, so I really He's much smaller that. than Chief. Yeah, but you know, it's like uh, escaping the institution. Um the other uh the other thing that I did notice is that um Hannah's with Ulrich as another power outage happens um mm. in the eighties. They're sitting next to each other at that bus stop. So she rides her bike over right before the power outage starts and then purposely like scoots closer to Ulrich as the power goes out and they're talking about how they expect the apocalypse to be crazier and brighter and more glaring. Yeah, they talk about so, what would you do and what would you wish for if the world restarted. Um, and Ulrich says a world without wind in, which is, I think, a very interesting thing to say. I mean, who, who would wish for that? <laughs> like, I would never be like, oh, I wish for a world without Okmus, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it. Uh, yeah, definitely was interesting. Um, then that's the first time they do the split screen. Yep. And, and Trante's at the same uh, bus, bus stop as Hannah and Ulrich waiting for Claudia. Mm. So another pers- another Nielsen who's cheating on his wife and during like this very significant moment with a person who's not his wife. Wait, Trante is – that was in this episode that Trante is uh, waiting for Claudia? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. I'm only up to episode three, so. No, yeah, I, I'm just trying to remember. I, I like, don't have that part. Uh, written down I, that yeah, he was waiting for Claudia because earlier in the episode, when Tr- we'll go back to Trante now. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Trante is waiting it for Claudia as she's arriving to the power plant, um, he's claiming he wants to interview her, but he just wants to see her, really. Right. So, um, he, Trante yeah. looking very Freddie Mercury in, this, uh, in the 80s as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, he also talks about how John is losing it at home about Mads mm-hmm. missing, um, yep. which is very similar to Ulrich's frustrations with Katarina, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, so and John is still. I mean, John still hasn't gotten over. Uh, still hasn't recovered from Mads disappearing in the present timeline as well. Yeah, and then Mikel, um, Mikel, I believe. Before he leaves the police station, I'm just sorry to jump around here. My notes, though, um, before he leaves the police station, I believe he completes the Rubik's cube and then he takes the lighter. So, yeah, he does take the lighter because that's what leads him into the cave. I didn't notice the Rubik's cube. I'll have to pay yeah, attention the next time they show the Rubik's cube. The missing, and he reads the missing re- person report on Mads. He sees the picture of Ulrich and Mads. Yep. Yeah. So that's like him getting more clues as to like this weird uh, time that he's in. That he's in the yeah. 80s. And then um, as yeah, and then as Tiedemann enters um enters the house, he obviously knocks on the door and opens because they're leaving the doors open for Mads in case he comes back. Right. So, so yeah, let's let's um let's jump to Ulrich then in this episode. And I think yeah. really the, the big stuff with Ulrich starts when um he's playing video games, listening to heavy metal, because he's a Satanist. And uh Egon enters the house and just starts walking around. Um I don't Here's, think Jana was there when he enters, uh, for whatever no, reason. No, she wasn't. She comes home later, I think. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they, there's a lot of very, very purposeful shots of things in Ulrich's room. Yes, I noticed that as well. well what, so what were some of the things you noticed? Title, the album cover title was Tabula Schmargardina. I'm guessing that's some sort of German, but the logo looks like the logo that's on the back of Noah. Noah's mm. that, that triangle thing. That mm-hmm. I, or Sigmundus, it looks a lot like that. Um, so I noticed that right away. Um, he also has no future written on the wall. Um, like almost no looks future, like graffiti. No future was also written outside of the. Yes, plant. I was going to say it's written outside the power plant. And I can't remember. Does Egon end up thinking in this season that Ulrich is the one behind the graffiti at the power plant? Because I know he re- he arrests Ulrich later in the in the season. I can't remember why. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, also. Um, as they're showing purposeful things on the shelves, they show the teal hooded figure and mm. the red figure that Jana switches. Yeah, I did see all those action figures in the back. Showed them all. So that she puts on Mad's tombstone. Uh, the one on the far left is the one that she is originally on the tombstone, and then the yellow one's more in the middle. So I don't know. Um, the like the line from the heavy metal that. Um, Egon is told, I believe, in the 50s by Ulrich um, when Ulrich gets trapped. Mm. Remember a long-haired Ulrich? Mm -hmm. He gets trapped 
So I believe he tells him the line, my only aim is to take as many lives, the more, the better I feel. I believe he tells him that in the 50s. So when, when Ulrich, when he's hearing that heavy metal song, that's the heavy metal song he's hearing in Ulrich's You're right. movie. In yes. The 80s. Yep, and so I was confused when Ulrich goes back. You're right, Ulrich ends up going back. He doesn't. Ulrich doesn't go back to the 80s. Ulrich goes back to the 50s and gets stuck there for 30 years. Yeah, as the, yeah, and like when he's in the jail cell after, and Hannah comes to visit him. I can't wait to come back to all that stuff because that is some. That's some uh, the craziest moments. Yeah, and when we get and, and you know when we get to that point that Ulrich is in the 80s with long hair, he's been stuck in that in the past for for 30 years. Um, I guess that was a different actor, and we'll see when we get there. But I always thought that was the same actor, just with a wig on. But I thought I read last year that it was actually a different actor. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, and I think yeah, yeah. So then, you know, we have we have that scene between Egon and Ulrich, and there's obviously tension between them. Uh, Egon does not know that he's going to have already had tension with Ulrich 30 years prior. It's the same person, and sometimes I wonder if just instinctually people can tell who the person is, even if it's a, a different version of them, um, which is partially probably why Hannah is, you know, I talked about Hannah falling in love with Mikkel because she can tell he's a, a offspring of, of all right. I, yeah. You see like, even in child Hannah, like these micro responses, like where she's somewhat realizing something mm -hmm. she, like, and it just could be like, it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like the, I love, I love the theory of, or not even the theory, but just what they do with with Egon's character this season, where Egon has this history with Ulrich that he doesn't realize the history he has with this terrible person was actually Ulrich the whole time, um, and then he, you know, because this is like you know, thirty years difference, right? He's dealing with teenage Ulrich versus forty year old Ulrich, so um, it, it's. I think we get to that pretty soon. Um, I can't remember when when Ulrich goes back to the fifties, but. Um, and I'm glad that I just kind of put that together because in my head I was like, oh yeah, all goes to the 80s and then I don't really, I'm a little fuzzy, but no, he goes to the 50s and that's how we get that 50s timeline. Because he makes a left instead of a right. Yes. Um, so, and then of course we get the scene with Ulrich and Hannah um, where they talk about the end of the world and, you know, if things started over, what would they wish for? And, and maybe that's a clue to the end game. I mean, we are seeing with um, with alternate universe, Martha, you know, maybe maybe we are going to end up seeing like, Somebody has to make a decision to destroy Winden and end it and reset yeah. the timeline. Maybe that's what we're maybe that's what we'll be seeing. So um other than the scene in the high school with Katarina, I don't think we get much more from her um in this episode. They talk um, about some song and how um some woman like some girl getting killed in the woods and went like how um the red lipstick. I think things that come up with how they treat Regina. Yeah, um, yeah. They talk about red lipstick is for prostitutes. I think is what they say. Um, mm -hmm. And there's that color red. You know, if we are saying how radioactive, if red is less radioactive than yellow, maybe there's. Although you wouldn't have yeah. yellow lipstick. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's. Uh, you brought up Regina, so let's switch over to that family. Um, I thought there was. So we. You know, the the first thing we see of of the of the Tiedemann family, so Egon, Claudia, Regina, is we see Claudia is going to be her first day taking over the nuclear power plant. Um, she is talking about the future belongs to the bold, and she is scolding Regina for how she looks and how she presents herself. Um, of course, Regina, we know, is going to have a bad relationship with Claudia, but what I thought was the most interesting from this is she's talking about her hair and how her hair looks bad. And of course, Regina in season two, well, season one, is uh, is going to come down, she's going to have breast cancer, and in season two, she's not going to have any hair. So Claudia is scolding her about her hair, and then this character is actually going to end up not having hair at all. So they're planting that very early on about her hair. Yeah. So I just, I thought that was really interesting. And we do see uh, Regina in, in the present time, we see her giving herself a breast exam we obviously know that that means she has cancer. They yeah. wouldn't show that. In, you know, it's kind of like when you see a character cough in a TV show. There's a reason for it. It's never just because they're coughing. Yeah. So. Um, and then, um, yeah, so then once she gets to the plant, as she's right before she walks into Helge, she sees Helge. Yes. Um, and, and Helge seems like he's just, like, mentally very unstable. And I don't quite know how he had a child um, and raised a child in Peter. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Do we know who Peter's mother was? We know his father was Helge. Um, I don't think we know Peter's mother. 
No, and Peter's really weird too. I mean, there there is definitely a way that this show has Peter is a time traveler from some other time, and much like Michael and Ennis, Helge adopts Peter. Yeah, and he just poses as his child. Right. And and we also see H.G. Tenhouse and Charlotte do that. So we do have a lot of this, like, adopted parent relationships in this show. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Um, and so Helge gives Claudia a gift. Um, we find out that is, indeed, H.G.'s book, Journey Through the... Yes, I was trying to remember which book it was going to be. If it was going to be that one or the, like, leather-bound uh, notebook diary thing. But it was H.G.'s yeah. book. And then he's cleaning up the no future painted on outside of the PowerPoint. And of course, we know, uh, having watched all of this, that Helge acts like he's upset about something, and that is because he's been responsible for these kids that are disappearing um, in the 80s. So him, him and Noah have been working together to, to kidnap these kids. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and Helge's father is the current person who's running the power play. He's the current head of the nuclear power Burned, plant. I believe is his yes, name. Yes, his name is Burned. Um, and so we meet he's burned yes he's in a he's in a wheelchair which um i don't know if that has that really has played any significance yet um and i i can't remember how much of burned we get in the 50s i think we get some um yeah. but that will be something interesting to watch yeah definitely um i guess well so we do have i know that once we get to the 50s they think that so Ulrich attacks helge in the in the 50s is that what it is and causes the ear damage that he has um mm -hmm. and yeah, so we right. will see helge's parents trying to find him so burned included um yeah. so we will get more more into that relationship as we get there and uh, yeah exactly um and so after they they leave the power plant we... well so i have more stuff at the power plant with burned right. yeah. um so there i think there's a lot i wrote like a, the most notes on this on this interaction right. um so we, we start with, with Burned looking at his family photos, um, and we see two family photos. We see one of him and him and uh, Trante, or sorry, him and Helge. Um, again, we, it's just the two of them in that photo. There's no mother. Um, and then we see another photo, which is a black and white photo of two adults and a child, which I'm assuming is him as a young boy um, with his parents, although I guess it could be, it could be Helge as a young boy with with. Um, burned and burns wife mm -hmm. which we will find out i do have this written down burns wife is greta so but we haven't met her yet um so we have that we have the wheelchair reveal and um we have that that burned has been hiding something for three months um the figures and, and they kind of just like hand wave what this is but i think it's just like the probably the nuclear readings um the radiation readings are high is my guess um yeah. He's so the, set, yeah. the figures have been for three months. So once again, the number three. Yep. Um, false figures. Um, says since Chernobyl, people don't trust nuclear power. Right. Says how fear is the worst enemy of progress. Um, he also says uh, some, he says things not, there are things not, he says there are things not worth knowing and things worth not knowing because you can't change them, which I think is, uh, you know, talk about fate and unable to change the future and the past. That's, right there yeah so um and then um so continuing with claudia so she goes and looks at the bunker um she takes the flashlight goes to the yellow barrels and she sees those um which she's gonna have to during her time running the power plant she's gonna have to hide those um, yeah and the um the one thing so we talked I guess we haven't really gone through what Egon does yet, but um, yeah, it was, that's what I was trying to bring it back to. Just yeah, so I think that's the most we see with Claudia. Um, of course, we see side by sides. We don't see a side by side of Claudia. Um, I believe. Do we see a side by side of Helge at the end of the episode? I can't remember. I don't think so. Okay. Um, well, not yet, at least. Yeah, because we see Charlotte, we see Regina, um, we see Ulrich, we see Jana, Tronte. So, um, all right, yeah. So let's go to Egon. Because I think that's the last big uh, plot line in this episode we haven't talked about. Yeah. Um, There's just like really quick um, with radiation on the radio again this episode. They mentioned the chemical plant fires this time in Switzerland. And mm. talk about poisoning the water and that there's chemical, toxic chemicals in the Rhine River now. So just another like seems like there's a lot of radioactive shit going on around wind and in the water in well the some of that is from chernobyl too so i remember at the end of the chernobyl series they talked about the winds 
pulling, you know, taking the radiation from uh, Chernobyl to other countries. And I, I feel like Switzerland might have been one of them. Germany was affected by it. So it's just kind of the, you know, we were, we were very shortly after Chernobyl had happened and, and these countries are affected by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then we get to the uh, sheep. Yes. Um, some good, some good rule of three with the sheep. Yeah. 33 of them. Yep. Um, I was looking at how they're laid out. I felt like it kind of looked similar to like how the White Walkers laid out their bodies in Game of Thrones. So like a spiral pattern? It looked like a spiral, but I'm not sure if it was. They, yeah. never, did the, they never did the huge uh, God's eye shot above. They only did the shots with the farmer. Um, the farmer ends up saying, be on guard, be alert. You don't know when the time comes. And that's from the Gospel of Mark 13, 30. Yep. Yep, I had that as well. So, yeah. he, Farmer talks about the parish and having a new priest. We know that's Noah. Um, oh he, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, because he because uh, right after that, Tiedemann goes, "I didn't know you were a religious person." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Oh well, there's this new great priest at the parish who's been giving me all sorts of you know." So I don't even know if that's a real gospel quote or not. I'm not a Bible scholar myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what the go I don't know the gospel of Mark. Yeah, and so um, Tiedemann thinks Ulrich's fucking with him about uh, fucking with him about this, so he starts to ask questions about could they have been poisoned? Right, um, he thinks Ulrich did this. Are um, they? Yeah, because they, Ulrich has like a hoof on on yeah, his shelf. On, like, there's like a shrine in front of that, like you know, um, the album cover with like a ram's horn there and like that that hoof or whatever. But none of the, all of the Sheep had all their hoofs intact, according. Mm -hmm. to, um, so, but it's like again showing it's like Egon thinks he has this figured out, and with Ulrich, just like Ulrich thinks he has Helge figured out, which is why he does what he does to Helge. Right. It's everybody thinks they know everything, but everybody because everybody's keeping a secret from everybody else, no one knows the truth, and we so they all end up fucking it up more. We probably see that you know Adam thinks he knows what's going on. And Noah thinks he knows what's going right. on. Right. And then we see what happens to Noah. Noah, Noah it's like, you're a clown. Yeah. Like, right. I know. Noah does. Uh, Noah, Noah's like an ultimate pawn in this. Noah's not important. No. You know? And we like, think in this, you know, in this season, especially in season one, we see Noah and we're like, oh, he's like the devil. You know, because we get a lot of Satanist stuff and he's a preacher. Like, there is a lot of religious imagery in this show. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's an interesting thing to track, like you know is is a religion is the religion stuff just like a red herring in this or is it going to play a bigger role um yeah i don't i don't know but um yeah that that is the 33 dead sheep they end up going to the autopsy or the, the coroner it's mm -hmm. kind of a similar thing to where they discover that all of their ear canals are blown out um, yep. they all had a cardiac arrest also Right. So I think I think what happened here is that this is whenever somebody time travels, there's like maybe and maybe it's not all time travel, but a specific maybe it's the uh, either going through the caves is what causes it. Um, I don't think we know which time travel because there's so much time travel going on. It can't be any time somebody time travels, but definitely the um, the wildlife dying as well as the blackouts, I think, are related to uh, time travel. Mm hmm. So I th and that's what I actually wrote down when we have the blackout at the end of this episode. Well, who is it that time traveled? Because we don't actually see anybody time travel in this episode, but there must have been somebody, be and that's why we're getting a blackout. Yeah. So um, another thing the coroner brought up is he brought up Freddy Krueger as well. He said the only person who could uh, talks about dreams, which of course sheep and dreams are always connected. Um, but he said Freddy Krueger is the only one who could have been responsible for killing these sheep in their dreams. Yeah, no, I know that it was just every question was a leading question trying to lead to Ulrich being blamed for this. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, he says he says Freddy Krueger is the only one who could have murdered thirty three sheep like this. Um, and I wrote down dreams next to it because it's just another example of a character uh, being influenced by their dreams. And of course, Freddy Krueger kills children in their dreams in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, and we see so much with Jonas having uh, nightmares. Yeah. So, um, and we get reference to Yugoslavian meatballs, which sound good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He, he, like again, just like the coroner, just kind of going through the motions, talking about a party. Mm -hmm. 
looking at all these sheep. Right. Um, and then finally, the last thing we see with Egon, he grabs a flashlight and he is uh, looking at the, I think he's looking at the fields where the sheep were murdered and all of a sudden birds start falling onto him. So this is, so the sheep were killed when Mikkel travels back in time, I think. Uh, the birds falling out of the sky indicates somebody else was traveling back in time. Mm -hmm. But we don't know who that is. Yeah. And maybe maybe we can spot it when we're watching this, but I don't remember. I don't remember anybody specifically traveling. You know, maybe it's just Noah. It could just be Noah or Charlotte or uh, Noah or Claudia traveling through time. But, yeah, Charlotte is fascinated by the bird and stuff. Yes. Uh, so Charlotte grabs the bird. Um, as a young Charlotte grabs the bird. A lot with the Dopplers. So we yeah. Here. Right. So yeah. So basically, what we see from Charlotte is she grabs the bird in the in the eighties timeline, and then that's when we get the side by side of her in the twenty nineteen timeline, also grabbing the bird. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the big the big thing that we see it with the um with the flashlights. I brought up the flashlights. I brought up the lighter. So a lot of times in this show, we see people led by a light. Um, and it's something I'm just picking up on this rewatch. So we obviously see the stranger Jonas. He has that futuristic flashlight, but we see um, in this episode, we see multiple people being led by flashlights to investigate things. We see Egon, we see Claudia, we see Ulrich. And then we also see Mikkel being led by that lighter. Yeah. And just, uh, I forgot to mention this with Claudia and Burned when they do, when Claudia does get Burned to show her where the barrels are, he hands her a key with a yellow tag. Hmm. So, You're right. Yes. Yeah. More yellow. And that is a key to nuclear activity. Key to radiation, yeah. Yes. So, um, and yeah, so then we see the characters side by side, which, you know, just for people who are watching for the first time, for me, this was very helpful because I was like, I think, you know, it's still, there's so many characters, it's really hard to keep it straight the first time you watch it. And so this side by side was really effective for me to say, oh, okay, that's who that was. Because um, it's, you know, outside of like Ulrich and um, some of the other people, even Ennis, I don't think I realized that's who she was, but because um, you didn't even see her in episode two. Um, but but getting that, you know, like Regina is a very good example of somebody which like I did not put it together the first time that that's who Regina was. Yeah. So, um, and then finally, the episode ends. We think that it would end with the split screen. It does not. It ends with HG starting the machine. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we kind of missed, you know, Mikhail slipping down the cave. Oh, know. yeah. Um, so Mikhail slips down the cave um, as, they're, um, as he has escaped, um, and he's running back to the cave trying to return. Slips down the cave, starts yelling for help. Um, at this same moment, Ulrich has broken through the fence, right? Of yep. the yeah, so they're both down in the caves at the same time. Yeah, and so he starts banging on the door with the radioactive sign on it, trying to get in. Then Mikko can hear the banging. Mikko starts yelling for help. Ulrich stops banging, hears his son yelling for help. And so Mikko inadvertently leads his father down uh, this time, down this kind of spiral of, you know, I heard my son. I right. It's, this is only going to make him crazier. But Ulrich doesn't go to the 50s just yet, right? We still see more no, of Ulrich it, in the present but it time. it solidifies his, his thoughts that Mikkel is alive. Right, that Mikkel's alive and Mikkel is down there. Yes, exactly. So, yes. So, uh, so right. Mikkel, by doing this, gets his father to go to the 50s. If Mikkel yeah. did not, was not down there at the same time yelling, then Ulrich might have been like, okay, he's not down here and I'll just leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we get to HG, so. Yeah. Yep. Um. So, so yes, yeah, so, so HG, and I guess, I don't know if he's starting the machine, but we do see the first time, we see HG, who we've seen a couple times through the series, and we see the machine that the stranger, future Jonas, has, and he's tinkering with something and hits a button and the, the machine starts whirling. Yep, and there's a, there's a ticking a few times and then the episode closes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you know, the, that machine is going to be a time machine, it's gonna, but it's, it's not going to be, he's not going to be able to use it yet. Um, he's, gonna, he's waiting on a somebody to come and fix it or a part that um, it doesn't happen until later on in the, se in the season. Yeah. Every time I see HG, I'm extremely uh, paranoid of him. Yeah. Well. It's really interesting. I had not, and any of my watch has really been that suspicious of HG, but I guess now I know Noah isn't exactly this big guy. I right. Who it is. And HG seems like my prime candidate. Well, Noah can still, I think Noah is and can still play a big role. Um, cause we see young Noah in the bunker, um, at the end of season two and young Noah and, uh, 
who is he with? Uh, oh, Young Yala and Elizabeth um, are going to be the parents of Charlotte. And so we do have the time from when Noah is a young boy to when Noah dies as like a 45 year old, 50 year old um, for him to play a big role. It's just that he does, he does die kind of like a punk at the hands of Char at the hands of Claudia. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the hands of Claudia later on. So yeah, but great episode. Yes. Uh, it, 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 this is one where it's hard to not go to the next one. Um, but that's why we're doing this and it's going to be even harder. Just imagine when we get to season three to not go to the next episode when we don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. So my MVP, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't even imagine how many times I'm going to have to watch each episode from season three before we talk about it. Mm -hmm. Three times. Right. No way I'll be able to watch that episode once and then talk. About no, it. I think we'll probably have to watch. I'll probably have to watch them twice at least. So, yeah. Um, but um, MVP of this episode, um, the M stands for Mitko. He's got to be MVP of this episode. He, like, that, I, the kid, I think, is a fantastic actor, first of all. Most of the kid actors are really great in this show, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but he just, I, I just, all I can think is, what would I, like, it, it, like, kind of melts my brain thinking about if that happened to me. Right. I know it's impossible, but it's like, well, what? You never know. Right, a lot of things it, that seemed impossible are uh, suddenly possible, so. Yeah, exactly. And what if it did happen and you knew it happened, you couldn't tell anybody. Right. Like, you're crazy. But For what 30 if you years. really knew? Like, yeah. ugh. Like, and what that would do, to, like, think about, he just lives that way for the next 33 years until it's just like, can't do it anymore i wonder when kid mickle and i don't think we see this i wonder when kid mickle realizes he's michael like he obviously knows that hannah is jonas's mom and hannah's husband killed himself so you know when does he realize like when does he put have that realization that like oh my god i like you've become the person that you've always like been fighting against or whatever yeah yeah that would be an interesting thing to explore i don't think we're gonna get that but you know, like he does start this relationship with Hannah. That's like it starts the friendship, and then they end up together. Um, when does he? When does his friendship? He goes, "Oh, this is who the person I'm going to marry." And I guess we do see Claudia um, fulfilling that destiny, in, especially in season two, where where Egon ends up dying in her kitchen. Like she read all these reports about her father dying, and so she's. I do remember like very vividly. She has him back to the kitchen, and she knows this is the night he's going to die. So she's trying to protect him, and she's actually the one who ends up killing him. So the whole thing she was trying to present prevent is what she ends up uh, ends up causing. Yep. So, um, all right. MV, my MVP, I probably would give it to Mickle too, but I'll give it to somebody else just to not uh, not double up. I think. Uh, Egon was pretty strong. Who was? Egon. That that was my thought. Even though he's going the wrong way, he's at least like investigating the right stuff. So um, I'll give it to Egon. Yeah. Um, of really course, like as we're doing this and we start getting multiple versions of the same character, um, that will always like if young Ulrich gets an MVP, which I don't think young Ulrich would, um, then that would that MVP tally, because I'm keeping a tally, that would go to Ulrich. And same thing yeah. with with uh Jonas. And I guess if we ever give Adam an MVP, I we will count that as Jonas, even though I am skeptical that that's actually Adam. But um, um same thing, Michael and Nickel. So yeah. Well, right now, that. Ulrich, Jonas, Tronte, Alexander, Mikkel, and Egon all have one MVP point. Nice. So, yeah, spreading the love. All right. So, we will be back with our next episode. This is going to be episode number four. Do you have the name of that up? It is uh, very fittingly, it is Double Lives. Mm. So, I think this will be our first episode where we get split between the 80s and the present. But besides this episode, it's hard for me to remember what happens in each individual episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, without no. having you know this one i knew was the 80s episode i don't remember maybe double lives is when we get the mickle michael reveal um that would make sense given the title oh yeah it could be I don't um know. so we will find out yeah i'm looking forward to it yeah so uh thank you guys for coming along on this ride with us i hope you are learning and refreshing some of your uh dark knowledge before season three comes out on june 27th we're going to keep going with every episode of this series. It's crazy. We're already through three of the 18, so we're a sixth of the way done um, somehow after just starting this this weekend. Um, I started seeing the notices this podcast is on other platforms now. It was always on Spotify. It is now on Google and Beaker, apparently. So if you are a Google podcast subscriber, you can subscribe on there. Apple is the one that always takes the longest. So um, the thing we're doing is adding new episodes, which is the big thing Apple looks at when they approve new podcasts. So hopefully we'll be on Apple Podcasts soon, which I know feeds a lot of the other podcast apps. So yep. 
Um, definitely stay subscribed. At least subscribe on Spotify for now or on Anchor until uh, we're on your podcast platform of choice. And let us know what you're thinking. We hope that this has been uh, educational. We'd love to take questions, feedback. I mean, it's kind of might be kind of hard to tie it tie it directly to an episode but if you send one soon in the next this will be up on monday so if you if you send one either by tuesday or wednesday we're not sure when we're recording the next episode that we definitely can include that question about the next episode or feedback so far in that next episode but um you can send it to us whenever and we'll work it in um the easiest way we haven't created an email address for this podcast so uh just send it to us on twitter i am at brooks z a and yep, Aaron and I'm is, at Aaron J A Y Brooks. Yes. So J A Y, not yes. J. Aaron J A Y Brooks. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, we send. It's better when we get and get some interaction. So let us know what you what you think. It's um, I don't know if anybody else is rewatching along with us just yet, but uh, hopefully, as we gain more steam and we get closer to June 27th to the apocalypse, uh, that will be that will be good. So yeah. All right. Thank you guys all for listening. We will see you next time for episode number four, Double Lives. See you soon.